Hey guys, it's Jessie from Plaid, and welcome to Let's Paint Live, where we teach you to paint a full painting in just about an hour. This month's painting is going to be Tropical Tiger, um, so we're going to uh, take about an hour to paint this painting. I'm going to teach you step by step how to do it, um, and when you're finished with your painting, make sure that you post your painting on Instagram and Facebook with the hashtag Plaid Crafts so that we can see your finished work. So let's get started. Um, first, I'm going to let you know which supplies we'll be using tonight. So as always, um, for our Let's Paint Live, my favorite surface to use is this 12 by 12 wood panel. So this is my favorite, it's like a wooden canvas. This is my favorite um, surface to paint on. So we'll need that. I also have our template tonight. So this is a template that I've put together for you to help draw your tiger a little bit easier. And you can find this template um, on our website on platonline.com. It's under the um, listing for this project. And you just print it out, it's four pages and you tile it together just like the instructions show you how to do, and then you just um, put it together with scotch tape and you use transfer paper. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to use that. But make sure you have this um, template with you when you begin painting. So like I said, I've also got transfer paper here. We have our premium variety brush set of 10 brushes. I've got my, um, I've got my palette paper, my paper towels, and my water basin. And then for the colors tonight, we're only using five colors. We're doing a little bit of mixing. We've got licorice, pure orange, apple red, aqua, and wicker white. And if you have the Let's Paint Live kit at home, if you um, are sort of a frequent watcher of this program, you might have that kit at home. These are all in the kit, so you should be all set to go as well as the brushes. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you guys how to go ahead and um, transfer your template. So like I said, you wanna go on platonline.com and print out this template, it's four pages, and it lets you know where to cut out the pattern and then also how to piece it together. It's really easy um, just to follow these instructions here. So that's what I've done. I've got my template here, and all I've done is I piece it together just like a little puzzle. It's the exact size of your 12 by 12 canvas. And I just use scotch tape to piece these together. So just use a little bit of tape to tack them together so they don't move around. And you should be all set. I've already got one done here, so we can use that. So here's my template that I've already pieced together and taped. So I'm gonna grab my um, transfer paper. And for, if you're um, unfamiliar with transfer paper, it's paper you can buy, obviously, to transfer things like templates and sketches and things like that for when you're painting. So it's got like a chalky, chalky side, and then it's got a smooth side. So you want the chalky side down. So we're gonna press that down, and we're gonna put a piece of tape to hold it in place. Just a little, I just have a little piece of stencil tape here. Painter's tape is fine, scotch tape may even work. And then I'm gonna put my template right on top. And for this sort of uh, transferring, you don't need to flip your pattern or anything like that. For this, it wouldn't matter, because it's pretty symmetrical. Um, but you would need to flip your pattern if you were doing words or something. You just put it down face up like this. Okay. Um, so if you don't have transfer paper at home, if you're having trouble getting your hands on it, a lot of times when I'm at home and I'm in a pinch and I don't have transfer paper, I'll take a piece of scrap paper and I'll um, use a graphite pencil or a piece of chalk and I'll color on the entire back of it and use that and it works just like transfer paper. That's just a little trick for if you, if you don't have this at home. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab one of my brushes out of my variety pack. Any brush will work for this. Let me pull a couple out for now. So I'm just gonna use, I've got my 10 flat, but again, it, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna use the end of our brush as a stylus. So we're gonna trace all along these lines of our pattern, uh, and that's going to transfer that chalky paper onto our uh, canvas. So if you've got a ballpoint pen at home, or if you have a stylus at home, that will totally work. But um, you've got your brushes here, so you might as well use them. So I'm gonna start in the top left. And you wanna put a medium pressure. You don't have to press too terribly hard. But you wanna make sure that that template um, gets transferred on there. And a lot of times when I've got all my supplies, um, when I'm transferring a pattern like this, I like to use like a brightly colored ballpoint pen, like a red pen or something. And that way I can sort of see better which lines I've traced over especially if I'm doing a more um, detailed template like this. Like if it's something really simple and you can just kind of see where the lines are, you don't really have to worry about that. 
But this one, of course, there's a lot of sort of detailed lines and I don't want to miss any of them. So that's really helpful if, if you're new and you um, are afraid of missing some lines, you can, you can go ahead and use like a brightly colored, make sure it's ballpoint pen so that it has that pressure, it presses down like a felt tip pen or something. That probably wouldn't work well for this. You'd have to press too hard and you'd probably ruin that pen. So again, I'm not pressing too hard, just about a medium pressure, just enough so I can kind of, I can hear it sort of uh, catching the paper a little, but I'm not like using all my strength or anything. I'm just drawing the lines with the end of my paintbrush, doesn't matter which one. And of course, if you feel like you might have gotten a line, but you're not sure, just go back over it. It's better safe than sorry. Um, and it doesn't matter. It's better to transfer it twice than not at all. I'm just gonna make sure I've got all my lines. And this is a great one for, t um, for kids also because I sort of give kids an outline. I think a lot of kids when we do these Let's Paint Lives maybe are a little bit intimidated about having to draw the shapes themselves uh, if they're new to painting. So this is almost like a coloring book. You can just sort of paint inside the lines and it gives you a really good, um, a really good start. So now that I've transferred all, I can look at my lines and make sure that I've got them all. And it looks like I do, it looks like I'm all set. And you can see too, I only taped it on top so I can use it sort of like a flip book and make sure that I've got all my lines on there. And it looks like I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pull my template off and just set that aside. And the great thing about transfer paper is you can see here, we only transferred just the lines on that. Um, can you kind of see that from the template? So wherever there's not white marks is still usable transfer paper. So I will use this piece over and over and over and over and over again until there's hardly any gray left. So you can hold on to a piece of transfer paper for a long, long time. So, okay, good. So I was hoping you guys would be able to see those lines. You can see them really well. All right, so let's get started painting. <coughs> Excuse me. So first, I'm going to put a little bit of our Folk Art Acrylic Aqua onto our palette. And I'm gonna put about a quarter sized amount. And I've got my 3 fourths inch flat brush here. And this is a brand new brush, so you always wanna make sure when you've got a brand new brush that you rinse the sizing off before you use it. Just a quick rinse, and then make sure it's pretty dry. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to just paint the background of our tiger painting. So just all around the outside of our tiger face, we are going to paint in a nice even coat of Folk Art Aqua. This is a really beautiful color. This is one of my favorite Folk Art colors. I use it a lot. So I'm really glad it's in the, the Let's Paint Live kit. So you just want a nice, smooth, even coat. You don't need a ton of paint, just enough to get full coverage. And the great thing about these folk art paints is that it's usually just one coat, full coverage. You don't need to go back and paint over something more than once, um, which is nice for when you're doing these quick paintings. And if you feel like your brush is dragging a little bit, you can just dip it in a little bit of water. You don't want, you don't want it to be too wet, but That'll help smooth it out. The paint is really thick and creamy, so um, when you're painting on these wood panels, um, the wood is unfinished. So sometimes it just wants to absorb that paint up so quickly that your brush can start to drag a little, which in my opinion is a good problem to have. It just means that it's going on really smoothly. So in case you're wondering, like I just said, this panel is not finished. This is one of our plaid 12 by 12 wood panels. And um, I, I always just paint directly on them. You don't need to gesso them or anything like that or put a varnish. You, you totally can, you're welcome to, but um, I usually do not. I, I just like the way that the folk art paints just glide right onto the raw wood and soak in so beautifully. It just takes the color really well. So you can see I'm kind of using the end of my brush to get into around some of the corners. And if you did, um, if you did end up missing any lines, if you um, are painting now and you're like, oh gosh, I thought I got all the lines, but I really didn't, 
go back and look at your template and just use it as reference and you can just paint it in yourself. It doesn't need to be perfect. So you can see there, I actually forgot that line right there, but I just, I looked at my template that I've got sitting right here and I remembered where that line was placed. So I just painted it in myself, that's okay. It's hard to um, go back and line it up when you're using transfer paper like that. It's hard to know where to place it perfectly. So I usually just like to, to sort of finish it myself if I do leave something out. And again, we're using our 3 4 inch flat brush in Folk Art Acrylic Aqua. And we are just painting the background of our tiger face that we've transferred. And again, I'm just sort of using the edge of my flat brush to get into the corners and around those curves. It doesn't be perfect. If you get a little bit into your tire face, don't worry about it. That's the beauty of acrylic paint is that it dries very quickly and then we can just paint right over it. So we can go back and we're painting the face and we can touch that up if you do get a little bit on there. Just finishing up, painting our background of our tiger painting. Again, we're using our three fourths inch flat brush and bulk art acrylics and aqua. Just go down there. Okay, awesome. So now we have a nice, smooth, even coat of aqua for our background. So again, I'm gonna clean my brush off. Make sure it's nice and clean because I don't want those, the orange and the aqua um, to get mixed with each other because that'll make a, a muddy brown color. Make sure I, I don't have any aqua left in my brush. Okay, so now I'm gonna put some of my pure orange onto my palette. I'm gonna do about a, a nickel sized amount. And I'm going to grab my number 12 flat out of my variety brush set. This is my number 12 flat. I think it's also a half inch. If you have a half inch flat at home, that'll work too. So I'm gonna go ahead and go, again, gonna rinse the sizing off. So when you buy brushes, of course, um, if you're familiar with painting, the brushes are usually sort of stiff and crunchy, and that's because um, when they're making it, they put a, something called sizing on it, and that keeps it really um, pristine in the packaging so the brushes don't get um, crushed or anything like that before it gets to you. So you just want to make sure you rinse that off so your brush is nice and soft for painting. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some of this pure orange on my brush, and what we're going to kind of do here is we're just going to fill in some of the areas, almost sort of like a coloring book. We're going to paint in um, some areas of color, and then we're going to paint the details on top of it. So the first area we're gonna paint is sort of this nose area that goes up near the ear. So it's sort of his, his brow and into his nose. That is going to be pure orange. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna follow our lines and fill in that area. We're just gonna do a nice, even, smooth coat of pure orange. And again, this is our number 12 flat brush. I'm just using the corner of my brush to get around some of these curves. I'm 
and showing a nice smooth coat. And orange oftentimes, um, it's sometimes a really uh, transparent pigment. And so sometimes it takes multiple coats to cover something in orange. But um, on this wood panel, it just absorbs it so smoothly and evenly that it's so easy to get just a one coat of like a beautifully smooth coverage. It's again why I, I practiced this painting once on just a regular stretch canvas that was primed and I had to paint the orange a couple of times. And that bugged me because I'm so used to painting on these wood canvases. And so I love the way they take the paint with just one coat. So again, we're just going in this large area that where it's all connected. Almost like a coloring book. I'm just using our brush to paint a nice, even, smooth coat in that area. This is just a great sort of mindless part of the painting. You can just take some time to yourself and relax. Turn your brain off for a little while while you're doing this part. Just filling in the lines. And I'm going to use my brush sideways to get into this little detailed part here. Just let it fix. And if you do end up going into the aqua a little bit, that's okay. You can just always go back and touch it up with aqua when it dries. Going around the ear. And again, if you feel like your brush is drying a little bit, if your paint is drying really quickly as you're painting it, you can go ahead and just dip your brush in a little bit of water. You don't want too much water. You definitely don't want to water down the paint just enough to um, make your brush a little bit wetter so that it's smooth, it glides a little more smoothly across the canvas. And again, this is pure orange and our number 12 flat brush. We are just painting this large area of the tiger's face. We're just filling it in before we, to get some bright colors down before we paint in the details. Oops, I got into my uh, eye area there. I got a little excited, which is okay. I can just go back and paint over it. Again, that's what I love about acrylic paints is that they're so easy to paint over. If you do feel like you've made a mistake, you can just hit it with a hair dryer and dry it and paint over it or just let it dry on its own, but it's going to be an easy fix. All right, so that is the area where we're going to have all of our pure orange. I'm just making sure I don't have any spots that need to be touched up, but I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna clean my brush off. Make sure it's nice and clean. And I'm going to put some wicker white on my palette. And just, again, just about a nickel-sized amount. And we're going to paint in some of the white areas of this. So I'm going to start with the ears. The two ears are both going to be white. And you may be asking if you're using um, like a white canvas at home and it's already primed and so it's white. You may say, oh, well, do I need to paint the white parts? And that's sort of up to you. 
I personally don't like to leave any of the raw canvas exposed. I like to have my paints covering every inch of the canvas. But if you feel like you want to save some time, if you've already got a white canvas and just leave these parts white, that's fine too. It's totally up to you. But again, my preference is just to have everything painted. I'm going to paint the other ear. And again, we're just using the side of our brush to get into the details. And we're just filling it in with a nice even coat of wicker white. And we're still using our number 12 flat brush. Okay, so the next parts that are going to be white are going to be these two areas here, sort of the tiger's cheek areas. I'm not sure if that's what it's called on a tiger, but that's what I'm calling it. So those two areas are also going to be white. And again, we're just using our number 12 flat brush. And we are just filling in these two cheek areas using wicker white. And we're just getting these base colors down so that we can start painting all of the beautiful details of a tiger's face on top of it. And again, this is sort of the relaxing part of the painting. I hope that you all are, all are able to use this time to relax a little bit just for an hour or so and sort of turn your brain off and, and enjoy this painting. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to paint this side too. I'm just using the edge of my brush to sort of get into some of these smaller areas. And again, we're using wicker white and our 12 inch flat brush. Okay, so also they're going to be white is our mouth area here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill that in. And again, we're just laying all of the color down so that we can paint on top of them the beautiful details that make up the tiger's face. And if you need to add some more wicker white to your palette, feel free to do so. And if you feel like your brush is dragging a little bit, feel free to, to dip your brush in some water.
There's a good bit of this white on the tiger's face. So this is probably the longest step of all. Okay, so I've got that painted. Now also, last but not least, the last part of our, um, last piece of white on our tiger's face is this area around the eyes, these sort of patches there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some more wicker white on my palette. I'm running out. And I'm gonna paint the area around the eyes. And again, I'm gonna use my brush upright so I can get into those detailed areas. I'm just going around the eyes. We want to make sure we leave those circles there so we know where the eye is placed. And do the left side. And again, we just want a nice even coat. We don't want a ton of paint on here because you want to be able to paint over it pretty soon. So just a nice, even coat of paint to fill in these large areas of color. Okay, so that is it for our white areas. So just gonna make sure I've got everything nice and touched up and smooth the way I want it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rinse my brush off. So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to grab some of my um, apple red and I'm going to put that on my palette. And I just need a little bit, maybe a dime sized amount. And I'm going to take one part apple red, so pick it up with my brush, and then about the same amount of our pure orange, and I'm going to mix those together. And this is going to just give me a little bit of a darker orange. And make it a little bit more orangey. It's a little too red. So this is sort of a nice dark orange color. And I'm going to paint these two areas on either side of the tiger's nose using this dark orange that we have just mixed. Again, I'm using the side of my brush and the edge to get into some of these little details. I got a little bit of white on my brush, but that's okay. I'm just going to wipe it off and keep going. Because my, my white is still wet right there, and I got a little bit on the edge of my brush. So if that happens to you, just, just wipe it off on a paper towel and pick up some more of the orangey-red color. And do the same thing on the left side. I'm just using my brush upright to get into those detailed areas. And I'm still using my number 12 flat brush, by the way. I haven't changed it. I just cleaned it off between colors. So those are going to be sort of a dark orange color. So I'm going to clean my brush off. So I'm going to have this red on my palette. 
I'm gonna take one part apple red, just a tiny bit, and one part wicker white, and I'm gonna mix those together. And of course, I'm sure we all know that white and red make pink. So this is going to be the nose of our little tiger. Just mix those up well, and feel free to switch to a smaller brush. I think I'm going to actually. I'm gonna get it nice and mixed, and then I'm gonna clean my brush off, and I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush, since it's sort of a pretty small area. I might grab Oops. I'm going to grab the number eight flat in the variety pack. Don't forget to rinse off the sizing. And I'm just going to pick up that pink and I'm going to paint the nose. Just filling it in with color, and don't forget, we're going to go back over all of these big areas of color, and we're going to paint details. This is just to get these colors down for the background of all of those beautiful details that we're going to paint. Okay, so that's it for the pink. I'm going to rinse my brush off again. And while I've got this little brush out, I am going to pick up some aqua and I'm going to paint in those eye shapes because those are going to be blue eyes to match our background. So I'm just going to paint in the eye shapes. So you can do sort of a dabbing motion, but I liked when I'm painting a circle, especially a small one like this, I take my brush and I do sort of a sweeping motion to get right up to those edges. If you can see that. And that's how I make sure I get a nice smooth circle. And if you mess it up, don't worry. You can just let it dry and then paint white around it. We're just using, again, this is still our number eight flat brush. Oops, that's some water there. And we are painting inside of the tiger's eyes with aqua. Oops. I'm going to paint over that anyway. That's not a big deal. All right. So now our whole canvas is finally filled with color. So now is the fun part where we get to start painting the details on top. This is the one where we're gonna get a little bit fancy and do some fun brush work. Okay, so first I'm going to grab my number 12 flat brush and I'm gonna keep him handy because I'm gonna use him for a lot of the um, brush work. And I'm going to put some licorice on my palette. This is Folk Art Acrylic in Licorice. It's a really nice pure black color. Okay, we can see that. Okay, cool. So we're going to start by painting um, some of these big stripes around the tiger's face. And so if you're familiar with painting, um, you might be comfortable with using a brush and making thicker and thin strokes um, by applying different amounts of pressure to your brush. Um, but if you're a beginner, that's totally fine. And we're gonna learn here today. So I'm gonna encourage you to practice on your palette um, just to get an idea of how it feels in your hand to make these um, um, heavier and lighter strokes. So here, I'll show you on my palette. If I go, put a lot of like really light pressure, I get a very, very thin line with that brush. You see how thin it is? And then just as easily, if I push down, I get a thick line and then I can pull back up and get a thin line. It's really just as easy as that. So you can practice really thick lines, thin lines, thick, thin. And all I'm doing is I'm pressing down and pulling up on my brush. And that's how I'm getting the different widths in my lines. So the first line we're gonna make on our tiger, we're just gonna go for it. If you wanna take a couple more minutes and practice on a piece of paper or a napkin or whatever you have, feel free to do that until you feel totally comfortable making these thick and thin lines. Don't think too much, it's really, really it's as simple as that. So the first line we're gonna make is we are going to make, here, pull this guy down, this tiger stripe right there. That's gonna be the first stripe we're gonna make. So you can see it's thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. 
So just like we talked about, we're gonna do light pressure, heavy pressure, light, heavy, light. And it's gonna be really quick and that's how we're gonna get that line. So I'm gonna start about here. I can even mark with the tiny tip of my paintbrush so I know where I'm going. And I'm gonna end it right about there. Can you see that? Just to give us an idea so we don't go rogue. So we're gonna do light pressure, and then heavy, light, heavy, light. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light, heavy, light. And we're gonna end right there on that mark. See how simple that is to get an, a really fun line? So we're gonna keep doing that sort of same technique for the rest of our tiger stripes. So I'm gonna do a longer one here, so maybe we'll mark it. He's gonna start in the same place, just a little to the left, starting on the orange. And he's gonna go all the way down to the nose, so we're gonna end him right about there. So there to there. So we're gonna go, see him? We're gonna go light, heavy, light, heavy, light. And we're gonna go sort of in a, a C shape, or sort of in a curve, I should say. So light, heavy, light, heavy, light. You can go back and touch it up a little if you didn't get enough paint on your brush or something like that. I didn't have enough paint on my brush for that one, so that's why it got a little, a little dry at the end. But there you've got another tiger stripe. We're gonna do this stripe here, which is just a pretty thick stripe. You can see, we're gonna start really light there, and then we're gonna go heavy. So here, we're gonna start here, right where the reddish orange and the white meet, and then we're gonna go to about here just before that one ends. So we're gonna go light and then heavy. So we're just gonna follow that line, light and then heavy. And that's gonna make that stripe. So it's really fun. You can sort of play around with this sort of thing um, to get different widths of lines, but it's really fun for something like this for a tiger that's so striped. So next, we are going to paint this stripe here, right next to his eye. So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna put a little dot, and then I'm gonna put a dot where I'm gonna end. So it ends right about here. And we're gonna go, you can see here it's heavy, light, heavy, light. So we're gonna do that. Heavy, light, heavy, light. And we're gonna end right there. Okay, so now that we've kinda of got that practice, you can keep practicing on your palette. We're gonna put a couple more colors up here before we paint those tiger stripes. I'm going to rinse off my brush. So, we're going to pick up some pure orange. I need a little bit more on my palette. I'm going to mix pure orange with a little bit of wicker white. That pure orange and then wicker white. Feel free to add more to your palette if you need it. I'm going to get a nice pale orange color. Nice peachy orange, make sure it's nice and mixed. And whenever I mix with my brush, I never go straight to the canvas. Cause see how much paint is on that brush? That's way too much paint. So I like to wipe off the excess and then rinse it before I actually start painting. If you have too much paint on your brush, it makes it hard to control. And your lines, um, you won't be able to control your lines as well. You won't be happy with the shapes that you're trying to paint. Okay, so I'm going to paint in this light area just below the ear. So I'm gonna pick up some of that peachy orange color and I'm going to start with a line just right below here. I'm gonna follow the base of the ear. I'm just gonna follow the line of that white and we're just gonna paint a line there. And then I'm gonna connect it to this white area down there. So all we did, we just painted a line using the flat side of our brush, just painted a line following the underside of the white part. And then we're just gonna connect it there and fill all that in with the peachy color. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to start about here, and we're going to just do a line following the underside of that, and then we're connected to that white tip. So a line following the ear, and then we're going to, oops, I keep dripping water. Make sure my brush is dry. And then we're going to connect it to this here. And we're just going to fill it in. Okay, 
I'm gonna rinse my brush off. That's enough for that light color. It's nice and clean. And then if you still have some of this um, dark orange color where we mix the red with the orange, feel free to use that. Or you can mix some more. Again, it was just one part apple red and one part pure orange. And that's how we got this color here. I might actually mix a little more because mine's dry a little bit and I don't want it to be too dry when I'm trying to paint. So again, we're just using pure orange and apple red. I'm gonna, you can see I'm adding a little more orange because it's too red for me. And we're mixing that. We still have our number 12 flat brush. Mixing that. And then again, I'm not gonna paint with this brush since I just mixed with it. So I'm gonna rinse it first. We're gonna add another touch of this pretty dark orange color just below where we painted that light orange just a second ago. So we are going to pick it up and we're going to mix a lime. See this one right here? That's what we're gonna add in. We're just gonna use the same sort of pressure we've been using for the stripes. I'm gonna do light pressure, heavy pressure, light. And we're just gonna fill that in. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light. We want that all to be dark orange. Oops, I picked up some of the light orange, but that's okay. And the same thing here, light, heavy, light, just to get that beautiful dark orange line. I'm gonna rinse it off. And so now from here on out, we're basically only going to be doing the um, line art for the most part with our black paint. So again, I've, I still, I'm on my number 12 flat brush. We're gonna go back to what we're doing with these tiger stripes. And so if you're, if you're just joining us, if you kind of missed the first part of that, you can practice in your palette doing really light pressure and then heavy and then light and then heavy and then light. And that's how you make those different width lines, the sort of wiggly lines that look like tiger stripes. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to paint uh, another little stripe right here below where we just painted the red, you can see here. And it's sort of light, heavy, light. It's not too heavy though, it's just sort of medium in the middle, so not too much pressure. And it goes in sort of a, a swooping motion, sort of a, a really soft S. So I'm gonna go light, heavy, light. And I didn't really get a very good tip there, so I'm gonna touch it up a little because I want it to be sharper. It's a really fun line. I think my brush was too wet too, so that's, that's never good. You don't want too much water in your brush. I'm gonna make sure to be careful of that. And then I'm going to start here in the middle. I'm gonna put a little dot sort of right where these two white um, little points are. I'm gonna make a black dot right there. And that's sort of gonna be the center of my tiger. Because of course, one of the things that makes a tiger so striking and makes their face so beautiful is that they're so symmetrical, which you don't um, always see in animals, but their, their face has such um, striking pattern and it's so symmetrical and that's what makes them so beautiful. So that's one of the tricky things about this painting is sort of making sure that your lines are pretty symmetrical. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect, um, but that's something we're gonna try to do is make them, make them fairly symmetrical. So that's why I wanted to find the center here. Um, of course, too, if you're, if you're not familiar with that word, symmetrical just means it's the same on the left and the right. It sort of mirrors each other. That's what symmetrical is. So I'm going to start here so I know where my center is. And you can see we're going to paint that line there. It's sort of thin wiggle line and then thick. And it's going to follow the line of that white brow. So I'll show you how. We're going to go thin little wiggle line. Oops, my brush dried out. Thin little wiggle line. And then it's going to go thick and follow that line. And don't stress if your stripes are not exactly like mine because they're just not going to be. You can even see my stripes are not even like the first time I painted this painting. So it's always gonna vary, but that's just how tigers are. No two tiger stripes are the same on any tiger. So don't worry about that. I'm going to do another one right below that. I'm gonna do the right side of a stripe there. And you can see this one's really squiggly. So we're gonna kind of do um, just a squiggly little line. I'm going left and right making it sort of zigzag, and then it goes into the white there. So I'm gonna do another one up here. I'm gonna mark the center, because I want it to be symmetrical. And I'm going to put a little bit of pressure and do a little squiggle there, nothing fancy. And then I'm gonna put this brush away, because I'm gonna move on to a smaller brush, because those are really all of my biggest stripes. Um, and if I'm gonna do smaller stripes, of course, we're gonna need a smaller brush for that. 
So I'm going to put, I'm going to go ahead and rinse this one off. And I'm going to pick up, let's see, what am I grabbing? I'm going to grab my, oops, I'm going to grab my number one liner brush. So this is a thin brush. Um, of course, we've been doing our stripes with our um, flat brush, but you can get the same sort of technique um, using the round brush. You just do light and heavier pressure to get these, um, these squiggly lines with varied widths. So we're gonna go ahead and wash the sizing off because this is a new brush still. I'm gonna get a fresh paper towel. So I'm gonna pick up some black paint and we're gonna do the really similar things. If nothing is changing much, we just have a smaller brush now so we can get some thinner lines. A little bit more control too. So we're gonna start by painting a little stripe here. So you can see it's sort of like a little lightning bolt there. So I'm gonna paint a line here, and then one this way, and then that way. Just a little lightning bolt guy, just to give it some more detail. And I'm also gonna paint this line here. So I'm gonna follow that white line, and I'm gonna connect it to that one. You can see, we just did that there. And again, don't forget, your stripes don't need to be perfect, and they don't need to look like mine. You can really put your stripes anywhere you want. Um, this, of course, is where I put mine. But the, the key is um, to make them the same on either side. That's gonna be what really makes your tiger um, look very striking and realistic. So again, they don't need to be in the exact spot as mine. Just make sure that yours are the same on the left and the right. We haven't gotten to the left side yet. We're still working on the right side. So we're gonna do another little um, sort of N shape right here. You can see. I'm just making little light tiger stripe lines here. <clears throat> now I'm going to do, let's see, I'm thinking. I'm gonna do another little end shape right here. I kind of want to make my strokes sort of sharp looking because that's how the stripes would look. So that one didn't get as sharp as I wanted it to. I'm gonna make it a little sharper. I'm going to do another little one next to that. And then I'm going to start working up on the ear here. I'm going to do um, a little stripe here, sort of a little V. So I'm going to have a stripe going that way and that way. You can go ahead and touch that up. Again, I didn't have my, enough paint on my brush. So now we're going to start painting some more details on the um, ear. So I'm going to paint sort of this outline, this edge of the ear that's black. We're going to paint that now using this thin brush. So you can see there's sort of different widths of the line there. So we're going to use our brush just like we've been doing to create that. So it's going to be thick and round, and it's going to just going to be a little bit of a varied width. It's going to get thicker towards the point, and then it's going to be thick again at the bottom. So here, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start on the left side, and I'm going to press down. And I'm just following the edge of the ear. And I, I'm going to pick up paint as I need it. And then it's getting thick at the top again. Picking up paint. And then it's thinner. And then it's going to get thick again towards the bottom here. And just touch it up if you feel like you need to. And then it's going to kind of fill in that area there, sort of the base of the ear. I'm just going to paint that in. And then I'm going to put another tiger stripe right about here. I'm going to do thin and then thick, thin, thick. And I'm going to paint some um, fur texture inside the ear too. Just really simple, sort of like grass. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to do sort of a flicking motion. I'm just going to do three little flicks. And that's just going to imply some, um, some fur inside that ear. So now we're going to head down to the mouth. And I'm going to do, um, I'm going to make sort of the mouth shape here. So you can see here, there. So we're going to start in the middle, just right where the tip of that pink nose. We're going to start in the middle there. And I'm going to go, we're going to connect it to either side there. You can see where that bottom jaw is. It's going to connect right there and right there where that jaw sort of comes in. So it's just going to look like this, just how you would picture a cat's mouth to look. 
can go that way, and then it's gonna go that way. If you've ever, um, if you drew when you were little, or even if you draw now, that's probably how you drew like a little puppy dog or a kitten or something with the little, his little lips like that. And that really is kind of the shape of a tiger's mouth. Then I'm gonna paint some details around the nose. So I'm gonna just make a line here, starting at the base, going up to the right, and then one going up to the left. I'm just following the shape of the nose, just making little strokes. And again, I'm still using my number one liner brush. And then I'm gonna make some squiggly lines here. And that's sort of the texture where the whiskers grow out of. So if you look at a cat or a tiger or um, any sort of feline, you can see that there's like little speckles where the whiskers are growing out of, it's little texture. So that's what that's gonna be. And to do that, I'm gonna pull my brush from left to, to right and I'm gonna do a little wiggle as I go, just very light wiggle. So here I'll show you like this. And I'm gonna do one right below it too. And that's just gonna be where our, our whiskers are growing from. And then I'm gonna draw some little fur texture coming out of this right here. And that sort of looks like a shadow maybe on his jaw. And then I'm going to, um, I feel like the top looks kind of unfinished there. So we're gonna start heavy in the middle and we're just gonna draw a black line to sort of make that area pop. Now we're also going to um, start working on the eye. You can see we really haven't really got to the left much. We did a little bit on the mouth, but we're just doing the right now. We're gonna start working on the eye because it's all gonna be the exact same on the other side, but we're just starting with this side. So first for the eye, I'm gonna take my thin brush, my number one liner brush, and I'm going to outline just the bottom side of the eye, very gently, very lightly, very carefully, just the bottom. So now that I'm comfortable and I, I know where, my hand knows where that line is, I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker. And you can just do it in one line or you can pull down on either side. It's however feels comfortable for you to create that line. Just a little bit of a thick line right there, right below, below that eye on the bottom side. And then I'm going to start here and I'm gonna go over the top of the eye, but then on the right, I'm gonna flick it out into a little bit of a lash. So this tiger has a little bit of a lash on its eye. So here I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go over the top of the eye and then I'm just gonna do a little flick there. And then I'm gonna fill that in, make sure there's no white showing. And I'm also going to connect that eye down to this area here. I'm gonna bring that down. Because then the tigers that I looked at while I was painting this, they all kind of had that um, tiger stripe going into the black around the eye. So that's why we're doing that. And that's our tiger eye. Okay, I'm also gonna paint a couple spots. The tigers that I was looking at have some sort of spots like this, just sort of in random places. I'm just touching my brush. You can see I'm just touching it. And the tigers I was looking at, like I said, just have like almost like little freckles on their fur, little spots. And I'm also gonna create some spots on the pink nose, just little tiny spots to create texture on that nose. And that's really it for the right side of the tiger. So now um, we are going to do, the, like I said, the exact same thing on the left side because tiger's faces, again, what makes them, part of what makes them so striking is of course, their colors and their bold patterns, but also their face is so symmetrical. So we're gonna start doing just the exact same thing on this left side. So I'm gonna start by doing the one, the line that I did with my thin brush, and I'm just, I'm just gonna match them. So here, I'm gonna go the same little loop on this side, and then I'm gonna pull my line down and go over the white. So when you paint this painting later, uh, if you're not painting along, and if you are just watching it, and then you're gonna follow along later, you can feel free to do um, both, either line at the same time. I kind of liked designing the one side of the face and then just mirroring it. But if it's easier for you to like do the whole line on either side and match them as you go, that's totally fine too, it's up to you. This is just the way that I found it easiest to paint. So now I have a guide sort of, and I'm just gonna flip flop it and mirror it on the other side. So I'm truly just gonna take these lines that we painted and I'm gonna just do the same thing on the other side of this tiger's face.
And we're just gonna make it as, as, you know, close to perfect as we can. It's not going to be perfect, of course, but we're gonna try to make it as symmetrical as possible. I'm just matching what I did on the other side. I'm just looking and then I'm seeing what to do on that side. Um, and if you're gonna paint this later, if you're left-handed, you might wanna start on the left side and then match it to the right side because it's a little more comfortable for me to paint on this side just because I am right-handed. I'm just, I'm picking up more paint as I need it. But we're just painting in the details on the left side of the face. And I do sort of encourage you um, with these Let's Paint lines, it's often time for, um, it's often, often easier sometimes for people, um, especially if you're new to painting, if you're new to Let's Paint Live, to sort of watch along and then um, paint later. Sometimes it's easier because that way you can pause it um, and you can take breaks and you can catch up and you can sort of go at your own pace because we do paint pretty quickly for Let's Paint Live and that's because we're trying to get the painting done in just about an hour. So we always do really quick paintings, but I do encourage you if you, uh, if you like to take your time a little more, feel free to um, watch this recording after the live is over. That might be easier for you. Again, we're just trying to match our tiger stripes. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just the best you can get. Make a little freckle there. I'm gonna do a couple little freckles down here too. I'm gonna do a stripe over here. I'm trying to make sure that my stripes match up. And I mean, a tiger probably isn't exactly symmetrical. I find it easier and I found that my painting looked better when I made mine symmetrical. I'm sure the tiger's face is, you know, maybe there's a little bit different than the stripes here and there, but um, I just found that, again, when I was painting this painting, the way it looked most striking and most beautiful was when it was completely symmetrical. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Again, I'm just matching the two sides. I need to switch to my bigger brush soon. I forgot that I used a, a bigger brush for a lot of these lines. I'm gonna do my squiggle lines, squiggle lines. Make sure I get all my smaller brush lines in. I'm gonna put a little, a little uh, diamond shape here because that's what, when I was looking at a tiger face, that's what the tiger had. Again, doesn't need to be perfect. I'm trying to make sure all my lines are good. I'm going to do my eye too with this thinner brush. And again, right now, if you're wondering, if you're just tuning in, you're wondering why we're going so fast, it's because we painted all of the lines on the right side of the face and now we are literally just copying them onto the left side of the face. And if you're wondering, why is that lady painting the stripe so fast and we can't keep up? It's because we are truly just copying what we did on the first half. I'm gonna connect it, so we're good there. Do a little zigzag there. And then I think I'm ready to switch to my um, larger flat brush that we used the first time we painted it on the right side. So what we had then was our number 12 flat brush. And that's probably gonna make it a little easier to do those thicker lines. We're kind of going backwards. These are the first lines you painted. Now they're gonna be some of the last lines that we paint. So I'm gonna mark it just how I had it here, sort of make it symmetrical. I can see I started there, so I'm gonna start there. And then I ended there, so I'm going to end right about there. And it was thin, thick, thin, thick, thick, thin. Don't forget, that was one of the first ones we did. Thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. I ran out of paint, so I'm just going to touch it up a little. And again, I'm just wetting my brush a little as we go if my brush starts to drag. Do the same thing here. I'm going to start about there. 
I'm gonna go thick and then thin. So we did thin and then thick because I was pulling to the right and now I'm gonna do thick and then thin because I'm still pulling to the right. So thick and then thin to follow that line. And then we've got another one right there, a long guy. So we're gonna start there and we're gonna end it right about there. And that's sort of similar. It's thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. Thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. So let's see, I think I'm missing any here. I wanna make sure I've got all of my lines symmetrical and then I'm not missing any. I think we might be good. I need to paint some details on the mouth that it looks like I might have forgotten. Well, that's okay. I'm gonna go back to my thin brush because I forgot to paint these little hairs here. Let's do that real quick. And again, we're just making like sort of little textured hair or fur texture right there. And then also I'm gonna paint my pupils. So the pupils on the eye are going to be in the center of the eye towards the top. So I'm gonna do that by just, I'm gonna mark it first with a little dot on either side because that's a great way to make any animal or face that you're painting look wonky is if their pupils are even slightly off, it's going to look cross-eyed and it's gonna be really noticeable. So it's always really important when you are painting something with eyes like this, that you have your pupils very symmetrical because that's gonna, that's gonna help a lot. It's gonna look really wonky if it's even a little bit off. So that looks good to me. I like where those are placed. So I'm just gonna make the circles a little bigger. I'm gonna make him about the same size. And I think that's looking pretty good for my tiger stripes. I, I know guys, he went a little bit quick for that second half. But again, that was just because we were just replicating completely what we did for the first half. The tiger is totally symmetrical. And that's why we were going a little quick there. But feel free to take your time and go at your own pace. Because again, we're just completely copying what we have had already done. So now, last but not least, I'm going to add a few white details using my thin brush still. This is my number one liner brush, and I just washed the black off of it. And I'm going to pick up some wicker white on my brush. My white's a little dry on my palette because it's been sitting out, so I'm gonna put a little bit of water. Just a little bit though, not water down too much, just enough so it's wet again. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna paint sort of these little furry textures there on the side just to make them, when I was looking at tigers, they like have like a lot of fur like coming out on their little cheek areas. So it's just like we did the um, fur on the mouth. I'm just gonna do a little pieces that we drag out just so you can see on the blue part that it is furry. We're gonna do it on both sides. Do it on both sides at the same time this time. Just do a little first. And I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, hairs on his chin. So little whiskers down there to make his face look really furry. Just to imply that the, the tiger's face is not flat, that it's furry and it's got lots of texture. And these are just some more final details. I like to add lots of details when I'm painting because it just adds to the realism. A little fur. And then I'm gonna make sure my paint is pretty thin for this next part. I'm getting a little goopy because my paint has been sitting on the palette. So I'm actually gonna grab some fresh wicker white. I've let it dry out a little too long. So I'm going to wet my brush. I'm gonna pick up some wicker white and I'm gonna put just a touch of water in here. Probably should clean my water, but we're on the last step, so. And it's pretty, it's sort of an inky consistency. Um, I say that a lot when we're thinning our paint down. Like if we're doing like a sketch in the beginning, I always talk about like an inky consistency. So again, that's really just the consistency of ink. That's kind of what we're looking for here. And we are going to paint our whiskers. So we're going to start on her little texture here. Remember when we talked about on the tiger's little lip, how we made those little textures because that's where the whiskers are going to be growing out of. So now we're going to be painting those whiskers. So to do that, I have a very light handle on my brush. I'm going to start on the whisker texture and I'm just going to pull out very lightly. I'm hardly putting any pressure on my brush. If you press down, you're gonna get a really thick line. And of course, whiskers on a cat or a tiger or anything like that 
are going to be very, um, very thin. They're going to be tiny little strings. You hardly even see them until they catch the light. So you want to have very, very little pressure. Here, I'll show you how to do the first one. See how, that was a little bit light, but see how light that is? Just tiny little strokes just to imply whiskers. And you can do as many as you'd like. Do four. Now I'll do the same thing on this side. You can see I have inky sort of paint on my brush. Hardly any pressure, and I'm just gonna do really light whiskers coming out. Hardly any pressure from that textured area. And those are the whiskers. I'm gonna get some of that water off my brush. And this is the final, final detail. We are going to paint little, um, the little twinkles in his eyes. So I think that always helps when you're painting an animal. Just to add a little twinkle to his eye just makes him look a little more lifelike. So we're gonna add a little shine. And I like to add it in the top right corner of the pupil. Just a little dot and then another little dot next to it, an even smaller dot. And then we're gonna make it symmetrical. So it's gonna be on the left side of this one, a little dot and then a smaller dot next to it. And that is just the little twinkle in our tropical tiger's eye. And then last but not least, make sure you sign your painting. You can use your number one liner brush for that. Um, but that is the last step of Tropical Tiger. So, I hope you guys enjoy painting along with me. Um, whenever you're finished with your painting, even if you're painting it later, please post it on Facebook and Instagram and hashtag plaid crafts. We'd love to see your work. Um, and keep an eye out. We do this um, monthly on our channel. It's Let's Paint Live. It's once a month where we teach you to paint a painting in just about an hour. Um, so please keep an eye out for the event listing for next month's painting, and we hope to see you then. Bye!